5 from Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. And I'm just kind of chilling on the porch over here. Uh, I've got my phone on me. I have literally all of my equipment inside, but I don't have any of it set up. It just, it took, for lack of a better term, a little too much effort. I have literally no idea how long this is going to last, mostly because I'm working on like Marriott Hotel Wi-Fi, and I don't know if it's very, I don't know if it's very good. I don't know if it's gonna stick around for a little while. Um, it's, it said I had like, I think out of the four bars that I had, there was about half of it. So there's only like two bars or anything like that. And I don't, I don't know how it's gonna last for. The last time that I tried to stream from my phone, which is what I'm doing right now, you see me live on a Pixel 4a, my favorite phone of all time. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually, I keep looking off to the side. I'm gonna turn my phone around. There we go. So now when I look at the, when I look at this side, I can look at everybody. There's nobody here right now, but that's totally okay. I'm just, I'm just chilling. I'm just chatting out here. It's actually, it's, it's quite nice. It is very temperate down here. It's very nice. I've had a very, had a very nice time with my family so far, to the point where it was, it was actually pretty fun. My, uh, my grandfather, who originally like had this like we got a, like a timeshare down here. Apparently, he's been coming from so 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 many different years now and my mother who when she was younger would also come here pretty much the entirety of her life and i think as long as i can remember ever since i was a young 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 child have been coming down to this exact location here on the island and it's it's great and it is now well 24 ish 25 ish years later and i am still happily coming down here it's it's interesting to think about like what the meaning of vacation has changed, at least for me, over the course of like many, many, like, you know, I, I, I say many, many years, cause you know, 20 years feels like more than half of my life so far, which is not, it's not the case for all people, but it's, um, it's interesting to think about how the different, like the meaning of vacation has changed for me over the course of all these years. I remember it used to like be just like a, I don't know, I just like that, 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 like, that feeling that you get when you go to a place when you're a child, when you go to a place like when you're a kid, it's like, it's like, it's super duper exciting, it's super duper special, it's like, I don't get to, I don't have to be in school, it's in the middle of summer, it's all those great and wonderful things, you get to play with a bunch of the kids by down by the pool, mom and dad get to make dinner every once in a while, we get to go out on the boat rides and all that stuff, and I mean, I guess, so to speak, it's a little bit the same. It's sort of kind of the same nowadays, but it definitely doesn't have that same like sense of like childhood wonder as it used to. And like, I don't think that's a bad thing. I mean, I don't think I need to get all up and excited every single time that I go out for like a week or two for a year. But um, I guess speaking on that topic of like what it feels like now, like I get so like, I've had like a relatively, it's, it's been a fun job. It's been fun, but it has like these stressful moments and I feel like I'm never completely off the clock. And it's actually quite nice because my coworkers like very, very, like they really hold core to their belief that like, if you go out on vacation, then you shouldn't be bothered. Like you should not be bothering the person who is off and like trying to vacation right now. And I think personally, I use Slack for all of my work-related activities, and I couldn't quite turn off all of the notifications on there, so I still was getting, like, you know, you know, booped every once in a while for, like, somebody said this in a chat, or somebody said that in a chat, and, like, even this morning, there's, um, every once in a while, these, let's, let's just call them fires, come up, and somebody like me, who's the firmware guy, has to take care of it all, because I know I have, like, the proper tools to be able to tackle these things, and so when that happens, usually somebody winds up tapping on my shoulder or I jump on that and they're like, yo, you gotta take care of this. Like you have to take care of this right now. Um, now I, I equipped it, I prepared for myself. In the weeks leading up to me leaving for a week, I, I equipped it at least one person, to, dare I say two, with the same, with the, the tools that I would use to be able to go off and do things. Yo, what's going on, Dom? How was the fireworks? The fireworks were, all right, so down here, at the Marriott Resort that we're staying at, they do fireworks every single Tuesday. It's just kind of like a part of the festivities that they do here. And Anna and I are super, super duper like spoiled from like our Disney trips and whatnot. Yo, Floral, how's it gone? I miss you so much. I was just thinking about 
the work stuff this morning, y'all are y'all are troopers, by the way. I saw what happened this morning, and I was like, had my fingers crossed for y'all. But so Anna and I are like totally spoiled from all of the like fireworks that we had in, that we saw in like Disney World and stuff. And it's it's like for those who haven't been to Disney before, like Dom, it's otherworldly. Like if you've ever heard of the term sensory overload, that's like how I would describe those fireworks shows. It's not only just fireworks in front of you of various different colors and sounds and whatnot. You've got fireworks on your left hand side. You've got fireworks on your right hand side, and you got. All the, and I think I just pointed in the wrong directions, but Anna would never notice. Um, and so, and they also have they have these like projector screens that pop up on like the on the castle, and it makes it look like the castle like bouncing up and down with that. They got the music playing. You've got so many different people around you, and they've got their they've got their kids on their shoulders. They've got their Mickey ears on, and their their eyes are like wow, and they're staring at this thing in complete disbelief. And to be honest, that was not exactly that was not the same way that. Um, it's not the same kind of fireworks over here. It's a lot more toned down. Um, it's a lot less loud. Actually, it's not. It's still a bit loud in the sense that the fireworks are actually closer. So to kind of just kind of set the stage for y'all. Actually, I could probably. I have my phone. I am on mobile. So I think what I can actually do is I can show y'all the view from my angle. Let's see. This is the kind of view that I have. I hope y'all can still hear me. So. This is the beautiful area here. Got a bunch of palm trees and whatnot. The pool deck is down there. The actual pool is there. And like right over there, if you can see those three lights, is a barge. And that is a firework barge. And so on Tuesdays, they put this thing all up and they shoot off a shit ton of fireworks, which is, is exactly what they did. The is that camera with an X? It is camera with an X. Yo, what's up? Are, are, you, cool with the next are you cool with being on camera? Yeah, I can cool switch it around. Mother Freddy, do you need consent? You can photobomb me. Yeah. Yo, what's up? Hey. Also, hey folks, this is, this is like, I'm on vacation with my family, and this is my little bro, Brenton. I've talked about my little brother. This is my mother, who also goes RS, RS Hey, Calvary everybody. Here. Love the palm system. I'm actually not really making anything over here. So what I've got, what I've got down here, it's a, I've got my classically imbibing. I've got just a little, I've just got a neat glass of whiskey. The fam says hi. The fam says hi to everybody. And floral is super duper jelly. Well, if you're jelly, what, do you want me peanut butter? I can be fluff. I like stuff. I like Nutella. Oh, Nutella. All right, Brennan's the Nutella, and hi, I can floral. be the peanut butter. Oh, hi, up. Dom. Dom Star, 99, floral. They look so chill. Yeah, my fam is super chill. And we've also got, you know, we've got the father figure, and we also have the middle brother figure, who's also ch hanging inside. And we also have our grandmother down here, the paternal grandmother. She's hanging inside as well. And I was saying, too, my my maternal grandfather and his wife, our step-grandmother, is also down here as well. They just flew down this morning. It was absolutely wild. <laughs> Floral's so excited that they should be. And that's totally cool. It's great. The fact that... So, a little bit of context. The only reason that I'm here right now on a Tuesday is because, yo dudes, it's a Tuesday. But also, on Wednesday, which is when we normally do things, I'm going to wind up skipping it. But I know. I know. It's okay because I'm doing that mostly because I had to choose between an 8 o'clock p.m. stream or, let's say, an early stream. If I did it early, I would miss the beach. I don't want to miss the beach. If I did it later, I'd have to miss diner lunch with my fam. I don't want to do that. And if I did it later, then I might have to miss mini golf. And I don't know how y'all feel about mini golf, but there's, there's, a, there's a mini golf course down the street from the hotel that we have here, and it's pirate-themed, and... I'm not going to go through the, all the details of this mini golf course, but there is a tunnel that you can go through. There's two different courses. The water is an insane sapphire color of blue, and there's at least one sign with a skeleton with bling on it next to a chest saying, bring me the booty. And if that doesn't set the stage for what this golf, mini golf course is, then I, I don't know how else to describe it to you. It's great. <laughs> Dom says, don't miss nothing. I ain't going to miss nothing. It's great. Oh, speaking of things that I may or may not be missing... I was describing how I do have a small, it's not even, it's not a cocktail. I have ingredients for cocktails down here. I didn't want to do it. But I also have, I have two things. And I will go into the details of what those things are in a little bit. Mini golf, says Dom, is slightly tainted because of my ex. But I want new memories. Dude, if somebody in your life has put a sour taste in your mouth for something that is so pure and so innocent like mini golf, then one, thank goodness that they're out of your life forever so that they Preach. cannot tarnish that thing anymore. But second of all, yeah, dude, 
go out for mini golf. Dude, you don't even need to do, I don't even think you need to do mini golf with people. You could be out there and just like experience the thrill that is like just the whole boop into a hole. And the best thing about playing with yourself is that you can't you, you don't you can't win and you can't not lose. Flora loves mini golf. Of course, it's a lot of fun. It's great. It is a lot of fun. Nobody should tarnish such beautiful things like that. Nobody should do that. It's meant to just be for fun. It totally is. I mean, if there is some sort of like professional like level of mini golf, I don't know about it. I don't really want to know. I don't think I need to know about it. I don't need it. I don't think I do. Whew. Excuse me, excuse me. What did I have for dinner tonight? We had tacos this night. It was Tuesday, and it was also Taco Tuesday, and we got to put all the fixings together, and it was great. It was awesome. I completely forgot how good, like, a taco that, me, that you make yourself can be. And it's wonderful. Plus, mini golf gives our people jobs. It does, because they get to build, like, the beautiful courses and stuff. And I feel like there's an entire, like, world of, like, mini golf sculptures and stuff like that, and be able to design the courses. It's great. I'd go mini golfing with you, Dom. Oh, we should all go to mini golf together. You know, there's video games out there. We should all play mini golf. Golf with your friends is great because you get to golf in anti gravity, which is pretty freaking awesome. And you can like golf inside of a volcano. Dude, the metaverse, the world of the internet is endless. It's crazy. Disney Queen asked if they're veggies. I had jalapenos. And jalapenos are technically fruits. There was red cabbage. I did put red cabbage on my on my taco. Great. Um, what else did I, what was else was there? There was also like the green lettuce too, right? Yeah. There was yeah. onions. There was onions. Onions are fruits, I think. She had queso. There was queso too. There was also cheese and stuff. It sounds like a great day. It was wonderful. And this was this was great too. So there is there's a whole over the years, because we've been coming here quite a few years, we've managed to make friends with some of the people who also wind up coming down here, and there is a fellow family that we will hang out with. And so they were the ones hosting the taco family. And usually they are right next door, but this year, they are not next door, because things were kind of crazy. I'm trying too hard, says Anna. <laughs> I'm drinking whiskey. I'm not trying hard enough. I also, ha I also have infused water that I completely stole from the, from the hotel lobby downstairs. An onion is a vegetable. Does it have seeds? I believe it. No, I don't think an onion has a seed on the inside. Oh. Yeah, I guess it's technically a... Yeah, it grows in the ground. Yeah, I believe it. It's got to be a vegetable. Onions don't got seeds in the inside. That's a good point. So long, Ken, for the next viewers. Peace to Brendan, who's going to college this year. Congrats, dude. The best. I have to help him move in. I have to take another day off of work in two weeks because I need to help him move in because my parents are off in another country. So they cannot help out, unfortunately. So, now that, that, now that the child, is, now that the technical child is out of the room, allow me to share what I've got in my glass, love his pants, do their plaid. I've actually, I've got my plaid on and my bathing suit, I'm still in my bathing suit, is also plaid. I have not changed out of it. My shirt was definitely unbuttoned before, but this is not a pools and hot tub stream, so I'm not gonna wind up taking it off. I'm not gonna go shirtless, it's not my thing. I also got my sunglasses on too. So, can't allow that, but he's got the red plaid. It's that buffalo plaid, and I did not bring that pair of pants with me. So what I have with me here, this is a little bottle of single single barrel Founders Reserve 180 proof Savannah whiskey. I we were in Savannah today because that's where we had to pick up my grandfather. He flew into Savannah, which was was a weird debacle. He was supposed to come in last night to the island airport, but apparently like there was a storm or something that happened, so they had to completely like nix on the flight. So flight was canceled. Somebody wound up helping them out, got them the first flight out the next morning. So they came out this morning. Flight was delayed by about a half hour, and we thought they were flying straight into the island. And we find out, because every single one of us misread what the ticket was, that they were actually flying into Savannah, Georgia. So we had to drive out to Savannah, which we were planning on doing anyway, because we really liked the tech, like the, uh, the riverside shops down there. And so we picked them up from the airport, we went straight into the shops, and we bought a couple of things. It's great. I'm sorry, I'm gonna pass out. I've been awake since 3 a.m. Tom, you've been up for a long, long time. You should you deserve all the rest that you can get, and that's totally okay. That's totally great. We had you know, my again, like my, my grandparents flew in, and so I think they've been up since like 3 a.m., 4 o'clock a.m. probably as well. And so when we were walking around, we had to jet out a little bit early because people were getting tired. It was like super duper hot down here, and like that's totally understandable. I completely understand that. 
we not not a lot of people you know it's not a lot of people function super duper well on a very small amount of sleep i don't technically function well on a small amount of sleep and uh, you know it's uh i can get a little groggy in the morning naturally i have some my coffee though my coffee will oftentimes help speaking of coffee I, I keep i keep finding these tangents that i'll go on before i go on the tangent about coffee though i do want to share about the when we were in savannah I stopped by one of the local liquor stores that they had down there, and I had been there last year, and so I had basically asked them in the year before, I was like, what, do you, what are you guys like known for here in Savannah? And they said, I think there were two brands. There was like Ghost Coast, I think was one brand, and they had to do like different like flavored whiskeys and stuff, and the other one is this like Savannah brand. And so I was basically like, if you had to recommend to me one whiskey, because I'm really running low on whiskey, what would you suggest to me? And they got this single barrel stuff. It's pretty good. And I've been just, just drinking it straight. I just had a little bit of ice in it before. I think it's very, it's very, very, it's very, very light flavor, I would think. It's got, it's almost given me like, like cherry vibes. I don't know what kind of wood it was aged in. Actually, it'll probably see this in the bottle. So let's, let's do a read. But first, here's a little education from the Dosni Kwan. Sleep deprivation starts when you have less than six hours of sleep. And nobody wants to be deprived of sleep. Nobody wants to be deprived of anything, really. Like, if somebody tried to take away my... my I, I don't know. What can I, be, what can I be deprived of? Well, I can think of a couple things now, but some of them are rather inappropriate, so let's not go down that route. If I was deprived of my, my stream time, I'd be sad, because I like my streams, and they are fun. And sometimes I deprive it from myself, but you know what? That's Life gets in the way sometimes. What I will not deprive myself of is the opportunity to learn more about the various different in, 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 libations that we put into our body because we have to give respect to the people who put the put the words on the bottle, you know? And so, for Savannah brand, single barrel, age five plus years, Founders Reserve, it actually is labeled 311143 on it, which is the barrel number that it came from. That was actually pretty cool. The bottle itself at the top says, producers of Georgia's first bourbon since Prohibition. We've been aging our wares since 2012. Every so often, we tap a barrel that stops us in our tracks. An outlier in complexity, character and smoothness, these barrels we set aside for extra aging. Crafted with select corn, coastal rye, and pristine Blue Ridge Mountain Spring water, we number each bottle by hand and present at a bold 108 proof. Cheers to you, friend. This is our best Savannah. If you're being deprived of work combos, yes. But I would think depriva deprivation is something that is bad for you, right? And I will say, I will say, work combos are absolutely wonderful. But I think I, I think I need a break every once in a while, you know. And this coming from somebody who, obviously, I have been working in the engineering industry for upwards of twelve years now, and I pride myself on the reputation that I have built for myself in this industry. Just kidding. I just got out of college a year ago. I've barely been out of the workforce you for a year. You caught me on my lie. But uh, it's good. This particular whiskey i swear i was drinking it before with my brother julian and i was like it's got a spice note to it that reminds me a lot of rye whiskey and i was like but i don't think it's got rye in it i just proved myself wrong there is indeed rye in there and i'm very surprised to think that i was able to, i was actually able to piece that out that or i just guessed because i know that whisk some whiskeys out there are made with rye and so i'm probably just the guy who's like oh look at me i'm so smart my tongue is so complex and it's experienced although it's not it really isn't. It's good. I was thinking, I was actually trying to think of like a cocktail to do tomorrow. And so I was just kind of looking around at what different ingredients that my mother brought down. Cause I didn't bring any, I didn't bring any liquors with me. I was just going to buy whatever I wanted. Uh, but she brought down a bottle of Merlot. I think she brought down a bottle of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, different types of wines. She's got some Malibu down here. She's got Di Serona Amaretto. She's got peach schnapps. And there's probably some tequila in there somewhere. What kind that is? not exactly sure speaking of tequila it was this time last year that i found out how expensive patron tequila is because my mother said hey we're running really low on tequila could you go to the store and buy me some i was like yeah no problem i'll go buy some tequila for my mom and i come back and was like did you realize that this bottle is 80 dollars?" and she said yeah it's good tequila it is good tequila and then about four months later after that she's like hey i have an extra bottle of patron would you like it and i was like hey, yeah i would like it that's expensive tequila. I'll totally take that. Floral questions if their palate actually works some days. LOL. Master Chef makes them feel so inferior. Honestly, I, I like... There was a long time 
where I would not consider myself a chef or anything like that. I'm, I'm still not a chef. Like, I cannot cook things for shit. That's what Anna does. Anna teaches me how to do things, and so does the internet. But I had come to a point where I was like, I will never get to the point where I'm going to be, like, as good as those people on the television we said on thing, unless I start practicing. But, um, oh, my gosh. I, I feel I feel the same way. I will never be able to compare myself to the people on there. The fact that I can even read instructions on a box is like that's top par for me. I I, I, I don't think I can get any better than that. And that's exactly where I want to be. One day I want to be able to look at the pantry and without looking at Google, be able to figure out what I can make for myself without instructions on the box. And maybe one day I'll be there. Tequila is great, and Floral apparently knows the whole te- you know tequila song. Da, 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 da. It's great. And Disney Queen says, haha, LOLs, Cameron does not do cooking. She just puts things in a pot and adds garlic, and that's her form of cooking. And honestly, when you add garlic to stuff, it just tastes great. It tastes awesome. And I love her for that. I love the garlic that she puts in things. It's great. If anything, it's like his microwaving. Dude, you know, everybody's got their different forms of heating up pizza. Actually, here's a, here's a query of the crowd. Am I the weird one if I microwave pizza? Like, I, listen, I know the oven is an option, but would it be weirder if I cooked my pizza in a toaster? Would it be weirder if I cooked my pizza on the side of a road that has black asphalt that is heated up from the sun? Would it be weirder if I cooked my pizza, let's say, in a frying pan, in a skillet? I don't know. I don't know. Disney Queen doesn't do any microwaving as often. I do all the microwaving. It's just it's easier for me. And yeah, correct. World. World. Okay. Yeah, it's weird. Well, apparently I'm the weird one, so I'm just going to stay here in my quirkiness and think that, you know what, next time I have pizza, I'm going to microwave it. And I'll continue microwaving until the ends of the earth. Until, until I have a point, until I have something that is able to heat it up better. Like, if you got a toaster oven on hand, yeah, it's the, it's the way to go. Skillet is the norm. Skillet is the norm? Well, I feel like it's definitely possible. It seems favorable to be skilleting pizza. Actually, we did go for pizza. Um, the night that we got down here, my brother, my brother and I actually drove down on, I think it was on Saturday, my brother came all the way down from Vermont, he picked me up in Philadelphia, we drove all the way down, he took one half of the ride, I took the other half of the ride, it was a really great time. I'd love to be able to have the opportunities to chat with my brother like that because I often don't have that opportunity because we're all in different places now, and it's great. Floral says that skillet pizza is cool, and now I'm realizing that apparently it's more of a thing than I thought it was, and... I didn't know that. And I, for a moment, I thought, like, this is such a great idea. I should totally cook pizza in a skillet. But, of course, somebody's done it out there already. I believe it. I believe it. But so when we got down here, the first thing that we did as a family is we went out for dinner because we, were, it was, we got here at, like, 8 o'clock p.m., and we were all kind of hungry. So, Cameron, do you cook? Asked Disney Queen. Uh, yeah, I can, I can make TV dinners. It's great. But so we went to this place called the Mellow Mushroom, and the Mellow Mushroom is a pizza joint that has excellent excellent pizza. They have gluten-free options for those who are into that out there. They have veggie options for those who are into that. And they just had really good pizza. I had a meatball and ricotta, like ricotta ricotta cheese pizza, and it was just, it was wonderful. The service at the restaurant was kind of subpar, though. Like, we got there, and we were, like, you know, table for six or whatever, and we sat there for a good half an hour. They said, like, it would be, like, a 15, 10-minute wait. And we sat there for, like, 30 minutes, and we had to go up to them and be like, hey, like, is our table ready yet? And they were like, oh, we thought you guys were waiting for takeout. So that was kind of strike number one, that they complete, basically completely forgot that they were there waiting for a table. That was kind of weird. They take us to the back, and the first thing that I hear them say up in the front is, oh, no, 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 we can't put them at this, we can't seat these people right now. Like, we can't sit them at a table. And so somebody wound up working their magic, so they're like, well, they've been waiting for like a half hour, so we, we've got to give them a table. So they, so they wind up doing that. It's great. Floral says that that he saw me on uh, saw him on Master Chef. Didn't win though. Oh, that's oh the skillet pizza guy. I'm guessing the skillet pizza guy. I believe or the mellow mushroom. The, the man known as the mellow mushroom. And so we get back there. And so they wind up putting us at a table. And the table is it's 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 dirty. It's got some like smudginess on it. It's sticky. There's like tomato pieces all over the floor. And we were like, all right, well. If you're gonna sit us at the table, could you at least clean it up for us? And they were like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, yeah, we'll clean it up for you. We'll get a broom and one, then we'll do that. Five or so minutes pass, we're still kind of standing there at the table, and the dude comes back and he's like, yo, I'm so sorry, man. Like, I don't know where the broom is, and I also don't know where, like, the bussing equipment is, because the busser usually has, like, this box where it's got, like, a little rag, and it's got some cleaning equipment, but he doesn't know where it is. 
So we're like, okay, well, maybe you should go get somebody who does have the busking equipment. And there was at least, there was at least, and I, I didn't go look for it, but somebody else in my party said that there was at least two tables being bussed off on other sides of the restaurant, so there was definitely busing happening. There was some bussing, bussing happening, but that bussing wasn't happening at the my table, which needed to be bussed. And so, well, somebody wound up coming around, and so I, he, I think he wound up finding like a spray bottle and a rag, and he kind of puts it on the counter and then walks away. Oh, no, no, Cameron did me. I was on, I was on Iron Chef, Master Chef. That's weird. There must be a lookalike of mine out there because I have never, I wouldn't call myself a Master Chef in least, but I am, if there is a beginner chef show, like for kids, I think I would fit best in there. Like kids who like have absolutely no knowledge, they basically have just learned how to read, I would be on par with their kind of cooking skills. And I would happily participate in a show like that. It'd be, it'd be awesome, it'd be great. And I'd probably do pretty well too. I, I wouldn't say that I would like blow these kids out of the water. I'd probably be right on par with them and it would be wonderful. So at this point, there is, we're all standing around a, a dirty table and the busing equipment, the little spray bottle and the rag is sitting on a counter about, let's say about five feet away from us. And the dude who's supposed to clean the table is nowhere in sight. So we're like, okay, well, they haven't come over to do anything. So my mother walks over, grabs the spray bottle, grabs the towel, and starts cleaning up the table. The dude reappears out of nowhere, which is like, oh, no, 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 it's okay, like, we can do that for you. And we're like, it's okay, like, no problem, no problem. We we already have it, we will, we will clean the table, that's fine. Winds up coming up with, with the broom, and he sweeps some of the stuff out of the way he winds up finding it. Then at this point, we finally get a chance to sit down, and we get to you know, order our food. And so the he takes our orders, that was, that was pretty painless, and walks away. We kind of rearranged ourselves at the table a little bit because it was like, it was a table that should have accommodated like 12 people and there was really only six of us. So we didn't need to take up that entire like side of the table. And so after we've kind of sat around for a little bit, we start bringing out the the food, which the, the honestly, the Mellow Mushrooms pizza is amazing. Their food is great, but apparently the service kind of lacks there. And like previously, I think we ordered from them twice now and it's it's good. It's it's like super good. Like if there's a mellow mushroom near anybody, I would totally recommend it. Also, like the inside of this restaurant was like super trippy. They had like mushroom lamps and stuff like hanging from the ceiling. They had a trolley car in the back that you could sit in. It's like what? It was really cool. And like the decals and whatnot on their menu was like also like tie dye and super like animalistic and stuff. It, it, it was absolutely awesome. I loved it. And so at this point, the food starts coming out. And my mother is like, she's not like celiac or anything like that, but she tries to avoid gluten as much as possible because it winds up like, it kind of bothers her stomach, it kind of makes her system go up all in like, ugh, nasty. So she ordered a gluten-free pizza. And what winds up coming out first is a gluten-free pizza that they hand to my mom, but it's actually my father's order. And so he's like, oh, well, that's my pizza, so I'll take that, puts it over there. It's not what he, he didn't order any gluten-free pizza or anything like that. The rest of the food comes out. Everybody's food comes out except for my mother's, the gluten-free pizza. And so, come to realize, they made the mistake of making one pizza in gluten-free and not the other one in gluten-free. And I like, if it were me, I wouldn't make the same big stink about it. I'd be like, all right, no problem. Like, it's, it's no, no big deal. But they had like, they had like, I guess they didn't mix it up to a point where they, they still made two pizzas, one for mom, one for dad. They only made one pizza and that was for dad. The other one that they made wasn't up to, didn't have the gluten-free in it, so they wind up trashing the pizza, and they're like, we're making your pizza completely new again, because it's not, you know, it's not the gluten-free. So, that becomes a part of the problem, because the pizza wound up coming up at the end of everybody else already eating their meal, so she basically had to just, like, pack it up, put it in a box, and head out. At the end of it, like, and, and between all of this, like, Nobody really comes by to the table to check on us. At some point, they forgot to give us plates. They also forgot to give silverware. And so when they did come around and we said, hey, could you get us some silverware? They're like, oh, I don't know where the silverware is. And you got to wonder, like, if you don't know where your silverware is, like, how are you serving people? Like, this is like this is like 1030 at night. So, like, if there was any silverware anywhere, I'm guessing, like, like, maybe it wasn't cleaned or anything like that. Or people just kind of lost track of it. So, you know, that winds up coming. It's crazy. They might be new. Oh, well, so Disney Queen says they might be new, and we'll get to that, because that gets addressed later. It, well, they, they, they weren't new. It, it, was, it was a little bothersome. So we wind up getting our silverware. We wind up getting our plates. They have, We have to remind them to bring us napkins and stuff. We have to remind them to bring us water, which is, like, I, I can understand when you miss a thing or two, but, like, it was really interesting that, like, 
everything, like every part of a process was something that we had to be like, we kind of, we need to eat it with, we need to eat it with the fork and knife or whatever, because people were doing with the pizza. Oh, my grandmother's going to sleep. She'd give me a little, a little, a little kiss, a blow kiss. It was very awesome, very cute. Love the love of the family. Um, so her pizza eventually comes out. My father eats the gluten-free that he had gotten. I ate my pizza, everybody ate theirs. I think Brendan got some like buffalo chicken dip, which was awesome. Their food is great. There's, there's no problem with them ordering, ordering takeout. It's great. It's beautiful, beautiful. It's, it's everything that you could possibly want for the restaurant, all without any of the, the discrepancies or bothersomeness there. And so finally at the end, we wind up getting the check, and they actually do charge my father for the gluten-free pizza that he didn't technically order. Quick word with the manager, they wind up taking that off. I think, I think my mother, we also ordered an appetizer too that just wind up never coming to the table, and we had to have that removed from the bill as well because we were charged for it, which was kind of wacky. It was just, it was a quite, it was a, it was a rather unpleasant experience. I don't think that we'd probably go back to that location again. And at the at the end, they like throughout the entire time, like they were kind of saying like we're like yeah, we're really really sorry about this. Like we've been really really swamped. They had like a big tourist crowd that had come in, and they usually don't have service like this, and it's been really difficult with the pandemic and stuff like that. And for the most part, like I think I'd be able to forgive something like that if. Like, you know, like at the end, like maybe you comp, a, you comp a pizza or something like that because it was a little unpleasant or, you know, if there was actually like a visible lack of people that were there and like you would think like if it was a staffing shortage thing that like there would be like barely any people in the restaurant. Let's say if you have a restaurant, with, let's say like 30 tables, if it was really, really understaffed, you might expect to see like six or seven folks. And there was at least a dozen or so people there. There was at least five people behind the counter. There was at least five people out like at the tables and whatnot. And there was the dude that was taking care of us and the people working at the register. And there was like two of them. So there was a ton of people there. It was just kind of confusing how like the logistics of it all like coalesced in such a way that the late night people who got there were not able to like get like the service that you would expect kind of at a restaurant. And like one of the final things that they say when they when they they, they comp us a pizza pizza, which is I think par for what they probably needed to do for the for the level of service. And they also they took the cheesy bread off there, which we never got on up getting anyway. They were like, Yeah, like you should have seen us a couple months ago. Like a couple of months ago, it was probably even worse than this. And they like the dude said it with a smile on his face and we were like, Oh, well that's it's really great for you guys that you've improved to that point, but like even so, like if like I gotta think like from the perspective of like if you're trying to hold yourself to whatever standards you have like if that was something if that sort of progress is something you're proud of that's really really great but like the bar for like even like a base and maybe it just maybe my perspective is skewed because like I'm living in America over here and we expect like kind of like faster service and like whatever comes along with it that like if, if this is where you are here and this is where you were previously but the bar is up here then like there are still people that are gonna notice that differential there and like you know you might not be tipped super duper well or it might be unpleasant or people leave, leave like bad Google reviews. And my mother is kind of that kind of person so I think she wind up did leave, leaving like a, a na uh, like a, it wasn't as nasty a review because I wound up looking over her shoulder and just like, you know, you could you could probably be a little bit nicer about that. But it, it was, was kind of lacking. Anyway, I think I've rambled about my pizza experience long enough. <laughs> I don't, I, I, I sincerely don't want to rip apart the Mellow Mushroom or this particular location. They ha apparently have been improving with whatever their experience was. And this was just a one-off experience for us, which was which was a shame. But if they were doing better than where they were previously, then that's progress, and progress is great. And they're, again, their food is amazing. Like, <laughs> the reason why we went to the pizza place was because we had had their pizza so many other times, and we loved all of it. We're like, oh, we gotta go to this place. We gotta check it out. And the first impression was like these mushrooms hanging from the ceiling and stuff. We're like, yo, this is gonna be super duper cool. And it just was like, it just kind of wasn't. So that's just that's just kind of how it was. And end of rant. That's how it was. Mellow mushroom pizza. Order it from Grubhub, Uber Eats. Get it delivered to your hotel room. It's it's otherworldly. It'll make you think like you're high on pizza. Like I guess uh, no other no other words there. A little bit clear though. I think the craziest that their pizza gets is they have like you know like a gluten free pizza and various other like interesting toppings like fish and salmon and stuff like that. Um, the pizza doesn't actually make you high. That'd be that'd be incredible though. Elameo says the floral. Gotta love the yeah, Yelp review. Yeah, it was. I think she probably let them like. She's a Google reviews kind of girl, and I'm a Google reviews kind of guy. I will <laughs> I will leave Google reviews. I think I am technically a Google contributor, and like I have. 
Suffice to say, I have posted photos on Google Maps that have been viewed by hundreds of thousands of people for a local Walmart somewhere in the state of South Carolina, I think. My, my things are up there, and people look at that stuff. I think, like, and I think I did this years ago. I, I found that that I can, like, I think the moment that I found that that I can post pictures that I take. Oh, Florida. Florida. Disney corrected me. Um, but so, the moment that I found that you can take pictures and put them up on Google Maps for other people to see, I was like, oh my god, I have to do this. I have to put the th photos up there. And, uh, and I did. And I come back literally years later and I see like, oh yeah, your, your photos have gotten like over like 10,000, 10, 100,000 views. I was like, that's wild. There are those many people looking at this particular Walmart. It's great. And I think the three photos that I put up there is a picture of the dairy section, a picture of the, like, a meat, it's, it's like a slice of, like, filet mignon or something, that was the sign, and then, like, a picture of, I think it's, like, a little Ice Mario figurine, and, uh, that was just, like, hanging at the restaurant, uh, hanging at the, at the front of the register. By the way, it seems that there are some folks, like, hanging in the pool right now, so in case that audio is getting picked up, like, I, there's nothing, there's nothing connected to my phone right now, this is, this is all I have. It's just me, my phone, and it's actually, this is hilarious. This is the, this is the mount that I'm using to keep my phone. It is a Disney container with a jar of maple syrup from, is that Vermont? Is it Vermont? It looks like it's Vermont. It's probably not Vermont. It probably came from like Walmart or something. Technically, we could definitely have Vermont maple syrup because my bro is from Vermont. So that's just, that's just how it'd be. They say take your mark. I think they're like racing the pool or something like there. It's great. Anyway, so I I would recommend go dialing things back. We like to do cocktail stuff around here. We like to do liquor stuff around here. Would definitely recommend the Savannah single bourbon. I would not say that I am a bourbon connoisseur, nor would I say that I'm a whiskey connoisseur. I wouldn't say that I'm a cocktail connoisseur. I am just an enthusiast. But I like it. It's smooth, it's light, and it reminds me of rye whiskey. And I have one other good rye whiskey in my life, and it is Old Forester, and it was a gift from a friend, and I would recommend it. And the reason why I looked for more was because I was running low. Now, if you're looking for a whiskey like this, which is rather fine, I think it ran me about seventy or eighty dollars. I have a receipt somewhere in there. I can't remember, but it's within. It was either seventy-nine ninety-nine or sixty-nine ninety-nine, and I think it was seventy-nine ninety-nine. Because I don't, I remember if I saw sixty nine ninety nine on the register, I would have said tee to myself, and I don't remember saying tee to myself. So it was probably eighty. It was probably an eighty dollar bottle, which is which is okay. Like it seems like a lot, but I am. It's the good stuff. So I'm not going to be using it all the time. It will probably last me the next couple of years or so if I use it sparingly, which I try to do. Um, the other, the other in libation that we have this evening is this little cup. It's a little coffee cup. It's got infused water in it. Every single day, the hotel just like, and this, this might be a new thing. I'm gonna wait till the splashing kind of stops then. I don't know if it picks up on the microphone or stuff. But so, the infused water that they had today, they were putting out semi different ones every single day. My youngest brother told me that they had like a peppermint infused water, which I wanted to taste, but they didn't have it since I've been down. They've been down here for a week so far, and I just got down here this week. And so today, they had orange infused water. Here's the ingredients on how to make uh, infused water. You take water, put something in it, and then if you want it cold, add some ice. If you want it warm, just let it sit there. They had this big decanter, and it had orange slices in it, and water in it, and it's been sitting there literally all day. And by the end of the day, your water will taste like whatever was floating in it for the most part. And this water, let's do some tasting notes because we gotta be bougie about that. Imagine for a moment, you were in a field, right? You were by a spring. The water is flowing, right? Imagine the water tastes like water that you got out of a plastic bottle. It doesn't taste like spring water. It doesn't taste like river water. It doesn't taste like dirt. It just tastes like water. You take the water and you sip it. You put it in your hands, you cup it, and you put it up your mouth and you take a big old sip. Well, it also happens that the field that you're sitting in is an orange grove, except the oranges have all fallen to the ground and have, there's no fruit left in them. There's, there's no flesh on the inside. It is just orange peels. If you take a whiff, as you sip this water, that's what this water tastes like. It tastes like orange peel, but like in a good way. Not like biting into the orange peel, but as if somebody took the oils from the orange peel and like sprayed it in front of you, but you were actually like 30 feet away and you're like, yeah, that's, I think I smell orange in the air. And that's how I would describe this. And it's, it's, it's extremely pleasant. I like cucumber water, that's good. I think the first day I got down here, I think it's, 
come to think of it, I think it's just all been orange infused water. I don't think they've had anything else. And it's kind of unfortunate because like this this hotel, like it's got a couple of different buildings and I think in total there's probably about like probably like 50, 60 rooms in total for like everybody and there's one lobby and each room I would say holds anywhere between one and like in my family there's like six people. So anywhere between like one and six people and they expect the one to 300 of us to share this entire decanter of water, which I don't think they refill throughout the day, which in my opinion would be a little bit of a hard sell for me. I would want to go up and say, hey, why y'all not, why y'all not filling up the infused water? This shit's awesome, because it is. And it's extremely refreshing. I would have been able to show this to y'all in my, in my coveted brand Marriott water bottle that I won the first day that I was down here because they were giving out raffle tickets and I won a deck of cards, which are inside, and a water bottle that kind of looks like, if you don't know what a Voss water bottle looks like, it's like clear on the bottom and it's got the silver top on top. It looked exactly like that. And so I used it for two days straight. I filled it all the way up with this infused water and I drank the whole damn thing because that, it's so good. And then I dropped it, and I got a huge crack in it, and all my infused, beautiful, essenced water was spilled all over the pool deck. And so I had to toss it because it was broken. Couldn't use it anymore. That's the way the Voss water bottle crumbles, unfortunately. That's just how it is. On the bright side, it wasn't made of glass, so I didn't break anything, and it didn't have any precious cargo on the inside of it. So no harm, no foul, aside from the infused water, which I actually, I chugged the rest of it, and then I had to toss it. So that's what we wind up doing. This is, this is good. I think, what time is it around here? What time is anything? I can like, the whole like, the whole like mobile interface thing here is like, it's different to me. I haven't really tried that before. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. That's all I got, guys. It's 11, it's 11 o'clock. I feel like we've been on here for a little bit. I can actually, I can't see, see from here like how long we've been on this thing for. But this has been pleasant. I think it's probably, if we're getting up early for the beach, then I want to get my beauty rest as every should be entitled to. I think I'm gonna call it there. Just a small little chat session. Just a small little, little truncated cocktail hour. No cocktails or anything. Just just chilling, chatting with the folks. 41 minutes. Seriously? Wow, that's incredible. Time time actually flies. It doesn't feel like any more than like 15, 20 minutes or anything like that. But you know, time flies when you're having fun. And so uh, yeah, to everybody who's hanging out there, just having a good old evening. If it's the evening where you are, the sun is set, the moon's out, say hello to the moon for me. I don't see a moon over here, so I can't say hello to the moon myself. If the sun is up where you are, like it's the morning or anything, say hello to the sun. Don't look at her. The sun does not want to be looked at, and frankly, you shouldn't be looking at the sun anyway. But if you like, kind of like cover your eyes and wave in its general direction, I'm sure it'll be. I'm sure the sun will be amiable about that. But to everybody else out there, no matter what times in the journey, no matter how you do and whatnot, I hope it's it's good for the rest of it, and I'll, I'll catch you all next week because next week is when like we're still in the midst of like moving and stuff like that so that it's it's all it's a little crazy Th things are crazy but we'll hopefully figure our stuff out by the end of august and we'll be back up again in whatever month comes after august i think it's september but honestly don't quote me on it who knows we've been drinking a little bit i could very well be wrong so to everybody have a wonderful rest of your evening if the evening where you are have a wonderful morning if the sun is shining over there twan twilight dawn whatever it may be Peace out to everybody. Until next time, bye y'all. Peace. Oh, I tried to click the button and it won't let me. There we go. Bye everybody.